Hello, Snackers. My name is Kareem Iskander. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. And I'm Matt Benapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode four of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10 minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff that you might want to know. And the cool stuff that we're going to learn about this week involves the Cisco DNA Center uh, Python SDK. Uh, Kareem's going to take us through and show us how we can leverage the API documentation and the SDK documentation for that matter, and, uh, and then write some pretty quick hit code to tie into Cisco DNA Center. So Kareem, I will turn it over to you, my friend. Hey, Matt, pop quiz. Do you know what an SDK is? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, SDK stands for Software Development Kit. Although this is a pretty, uh, pretty common misconception, uh, and people use the term API and SDK interchangeably sometimes, and sometimes it's right, but in most instances, an SDK is an implementation of the APIs, uh, and usually language-specific. And so specifically today, um, we're going to be looking at, I believe, the implementation of the Cisco DNA Center APIs into the Cisco DNA Center Python SDK. Is that am I, did I get that right? A hundred percent, Matt. Uh, you passed. So today we are going to be talking about the Python SDK. Um, so before we get started, anywhere that you know where whether you're familiar with DNAC, Cisco DNA Center or not, uh, developer.cisco.com is the place to start. And for every single technology, as you know. Uh, we have a, a, essentially have a microsite for it for us to view. So in this case, I'm just heading over to my uh, instance of or my DNAC microsite uh, technology site. If I head over there and if I go to technologies and I head over to my platform, this is where I have all of my resources, my API documentation, my SDK documentation, Matt. So I could go there and check out. And I know you have you've done some awesome work around the Meraki uh, microsite that we that you that we've we've hosted on there as well, right? Yeah, and we'll we'll be looking at that in future episodes, I'm sure. <laughs> exactly. So, in this case, um, I headed over to my DNAC API user guide, and this part of part of the the what we have from a documentation is uh, talking about the SDK and the different things that you can do with the SDK. What I'll, I'd like to show you, um, Snackers and Matt, what we have here is um, the essentially the how to get started with just running, basically authenticating with DNA Center uh, and running a command across your uh, managed devices. Okay, so for authentication, this is how DNA Center works, right? You basically uh, supply your username and password that was handed to you by your DNAC admin. You you know, um, go out and you hit the the authentication endpoint. You encode your uh, base, your username and password to base sixty four, and you go out and authenticate against DNAC. If you if the authentica authentication is successful, it comes back with a token. So and and that token is essentially used for subsequent uh, co API calls. And I know it's a little bit different from other APIs, right, Matt? For that we talk about, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it obviously just depends. I mean, if we're, if we're providing examples and comparisons, Meraki uses an API key that is given to you as part of your administrative access. Um, so it's it's kind of a one-stop shop for that. Um, you know, WebEx Teams uses a version of OAuth 2 and developer tokens, depending on what you're doing. Um, and so uh, Cisco DNA Center is a little bit different in that it's using basic auth first to generate our token. So yeah, I'm familiar with that. Right. So um, once we are authenticated, we can start playing with those APIs, right? The one that the one API I'd like to show us, and just an example of how the SDK makes our life easier, is the command runner as uh, a API. And, um, and so the command runner is basically just DNAC manages devices. The devices are available. You can inject commands throughout your entire infrastructure to get something out of it. It's like automating CLI commands, right? 
That's exactly right. Via the via those APIs, and yeah. and not everything is is you know accepted. It's only a certain list of APIs that uh, sorry a certain list of show commands that are the read only commands that are allowed via the API because we're not talking to the devices at a device level. We're talking to the devices a little bit at a higher level from a from a controller level, right? So this is essentially the flow that we're going to go through, right? We authenticate. We go out, get a list of devices. We need the list of devices because we need to understand the IDs for every single device. And once we capture those IDs, we can start sending commands out to the different uh, devices. The way, and this is, and I know you're familiar with this, Matt, the way the, the, the tasks are handled in DNA Center, it's not just an API call, right? No, right. So you have to, if I remember correctly, you have to, you send in an API call, it generates a task ID, and then you have to check the task um, that's running asynchron asynchronously. And um, so you have to go through, in, in implementation, you might have to put in a for loop in, or a while loop, depending on what you feel comfortable with. And you check that task ID over and over until you are indicated that it is completed. Is that right? That, that's that's exactly right, Matt. So we uh, we basically, we do that command, We you wait for the task to complete, and once the task is complete, you can go do get whatever information you've asked from that task. And this this applies to device onboarding. This applies to applies to you know creating a new site. It doesn't matter. You always create a task. You wait for the task to complete. In this case, what we're waiting for completion is the content of our show command, right? Um, whether it's uh, the running config or the show ver or whatever it is that we we asked, right? We need it's going to come back with a payload that we have to wait for. So if you're managing all of this, you on, you know, using your basic libraries, you actually have to handle all of that on your end. If you're using the SDK, the SDK handles all of that for you where you don't actually have to worry about it. Nice. So we're talking about, I don't have to set my headers. I don't have to set my payloads. Um, I don't have to, do I have to serialize and deserialize my JSON? Do I have to worry about no, that? No, absolutely not. That's a great question, Matt. You don't, you don't, it comes back and it handles all of that for you. And I'll show you in code right here, which is a great segue for me to, to show you what I've done. Then everything is probably going to be in a Python dictionary, right? Oh yeah, for sure. That's, that's how we roll, you know? So if we look at this, right, uh, this is a simple script that I wrote. Uh, we can expand on this as a use case if you want, think about you know, running a show commands for your all your running config throughout your entire infrastructure, capturing that and saving that to version control to be able to see a diff when um, when changes happen to your uh, to your uh, infrastructure, right? So, but for this is a use case out of just using the simple show commands, right? So, um, for the sake of this conversation, I'm basically going out and I'm going to assume that you already know how to set up. Uh, how to set up an SDK and on using Python pip, right? It should be straightforward. We've covered it. If you've been part of DevNet, you should already know this, right? So if we're looking at this, uh, you know, I'm importing the SDK. I'm I'm authenticating. I know this is bad practice, but I'm just doing it for for the sake of this. So I'm going out. I'm doing that for workflow. It's essentially what suggested getting a device list, and you can see I'm instantiating a new instance of the DNA Center API using the SDK. And it creates an object from me, right? So I have to authenticate. It's simple as supplying the username and password and authenticate it. The token from me from this point on is saved part of this object. So I don't actually have to handle any of that. All right, so, the, um, so I'm looking down here, the next line here, you have auth token, DNAC, that access token, that's going to be the, the token that's generated for us and, and it's now an attribute that's part of that object, right? That's exactly right. So from, and I don't, I, I don't have to set my headers. I don't have to, I don't have to do any of that anymore, right? It's part, it's all handled by the SDK. So once I have that, I'm, I'm going in and I'm saying, uh, DNAC, go out. And this is a, this is a method of this object that I can basically a function that I can call. Uh, and you can see all of that in the documentation on our site. But part of devices, I have a function called get device list, which basically prints out a list of devices. And if you notice how my IDE here, because the, DN, the, the SDK is really well documented, I can actually see 
all of the the methods and attributes that I can have that I have access to here. So it actually helps you out tremendously because it's well written within the editor itself. So I'm going in and I'm pulling a list of devices and I'm printing out the devices. At this point, I'm capturing one device ID and I'm going to run this at the end to show you. And I'm basically going again saying part of my command runner, I can go and get a list of all accepted device uh, commands on my devices. I'm printing that out. And the next logical step would be to basically just execute a command. And this is what we talked about, Matt this portion here where because the command runner is going to come back with a task ID. Yeah. So now I can see this. So instead of having to write probably 15 to 20 lines of code to manage the, the handling of the task ID with multiple API calls, it's one line of code. I mean, it's three, you know, you have it in three lines to print it out, but it's actually just one line of code to, to, to check that task ID. Touche. So that's, that's exactly right. And, and, it just it's just super sweet, super simple. I don't think I'm ever going back to writing, you know, request calls to to DNAC. I'm just gonna do an SDK using the SDK from now on. So it gave me a task ID back. I'm going back and I'm just printing out that information. Um, I ran out of time because I, I didn't get the chance to complete the entire um, showing of the verge. But but we, you know, part of my block series. If you're following uh, the SDK block series that I'm writing, you will have this code out there on Code Exchange to, for you to to check out. So let's just go run this. And so if I go here and execute this, so it authenticated. I'm pulling the device information. These are all of the managed devices by DNAC. And I'm using the sandbox. And you can see that I have the UID, the device ID. Next is the commands that are supported part of this, which is this one line right here. And I know that show commands is, is, a, is acceptable. I ran this and it came back with the task ID. From this point on, because the task is completed, I can go out and say, give me the actual file payload for me to see what uh, the show version has returned for that device. And you can manage all the configurations across your devices like that. Um, you know, save them as backups or whatever you need to do with them. Exactly. And this is where you were essentially saying just do a for loop or a while loop. If you do it on within this command, then you can iterate through the list of all of your devices and you can essentially accomplish the use case that you just mentioned. So you can see how easy and cool it is. This is what, 20 lines of code, 30 lines of code? Yeah, I mean, I, if I were doing this through the request library, I'd be writing at least three times as much code to to get to the same endpoint. So the the SDK definitely saves us some headache in in dealing with these APIs. So that's very cool, Kareem. Not to mention one thing, Matt. Before we we hop off here, the the last thing is the error handling portion of where you don't actually have to handle all the errors. The SDK handles it for you. So it manages your JSON. You don't have to deserialize it. It manages your errors and it comes back with, you know, something for you to take action upon within the SDK itself. So that's just the cherry on the top um, of, yeah. of this awesome SDK. So <laughs> uh, well, that's all the time we have for today, Snackers. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Kareem. And uh, catch us next week. We're going to be uh, probably touching on a similar topic around Meraki and their Python SDK. So come check us out next week. Thanks. Thanks.